Hello guys. I'm going to review the SIG 33 Auf Pentakampfwagen 1 Ausführung B. Um, this little guy. Um, I'd seen it in documentaries. Actually, there's like some really famous footage of it. Um, gosh, could be in Poland, could be in early Russia. I, I want to say Poland. Um, but I could be wrong. Uh, that if it's shooting in a building, and you see it's even on the intro to certain documentary shows that I've watched. Um, this came with, for me when I bought it, it came with a crappy or Panzer 1B kit that I was trying to buy, and someone just sort of threw this in with it. Little did I know, this thing runs for like 60 bucks. Also, it's a um, very unassuming box, hides quite a bit of stuff. It's actually a very intimidating kit. That's why I haven't touched it, I've had it for over a year. So, uh, it's a SIG-33, right, so it's an anti-personnel gun on a Panzer 1B chassis with a ridiculous superstructure. And it's kind of so horrible looking that it's cool. Bunch of different markings, which is kind of surprising, because I'm pretty sure it was mostly early war. This may be a training or something in Dunkel Gal with Olive Grun. Um, Alright, I'm seriously super intimidated by this thing. Uh, razor Edge, I had a bad experience with this on my NAS horn, where it was all bent. So, hopefully that's not the case here. Um, there's an interior here. Um, partial interior? Highly detailed reinforcement elements for gun trails fixed on engine deck, okay. Protective case for rounds. So these are like wicker, that comes in DS, it's pretty cool. This guy stated... 2008. Just have a look at any of that. That is just, there's tons of, of PE everywhere. Um, around the vent, or uh, exhaust, it's pretty standard on early war tanks. Magic tracks, Panzer 1 magic tracks. Which is better than removing them from the sprue. Hey, right? The PE on the wheels, I like that. PE in the holders and the spare wheels. It is a fully, if you don't understand this vehicle, it's the entire SIG 33. With wheels and all, just sitting on a Panzer I. It's freaking bizarre. Now that I've built a NAS horn, this might be less intimidating. I hadn't done any kind of artillery stuff, or like full gun assembly stuff. Those lights are killing me. So I can get them a little less reflecty. There we go. Um, so yeah. There's a lot going on in this guy. Two different types of fighting compartment. Um, all kinds of stuff. So, alright, let's look at the kit, because, again though, check out how thin that box is, right? It's one of these little guys. Like, oh, and the metal barrel is in there. So, instructions. Oh, this kit. I've been opening it, looking at it, and not building it for quite some time, so. I know it pretty well, although I've never built it. So, we've got quite a few sprues. I'm not going to count them, but there's a bunch. There's a few in here that you're not using a whole lot on. I'm guessing this is a Panzer I sprue. But that's a ton. For a box that's only that deep, it's, you know, it's the thinnest boxes they make. Alright. So, the, just the wheels, like, so here we got PE going on, plastic going on, more PE, with some tiny little bits for suspension. Here's the rails. This is suspension. I built it on a TriStar kit. It's pretty fiddly. Just a Panzer One suspension in general. Um, I don't know the way that I did the the TriStar one. I did build it this way, and now I I haven't painted the rubber on the wheels because I have no idea how to. I'll have to brush paint it. So everything seems relatively simple up to here. There's the exhaust, two halves, a little disappointing with that. PE goes on top of it though, so it shouldn't be an issue. Here's your interior, firewall, transmission housing, seats, sticks, good lord, look at that. Transmission. Wow. See, so this is just getting a bit intense, and then here's the built up basically fighting or a driver's compartment. 
things on this in here. And that's all pretty busy. And for a tank the size of it, good lord. Um, these instructions are a bit ridiculous. <sighs> okay. All right. So here we have the choice of superstructure, I believe. And it's one piece. Razor edge, slide molded. It's very nice looking. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, you've got the engine deck in the, the front of the thing. Whatever they call that on this. I don't think you ever even see this. The jack. Some more photo etch pieces. It, I've never built a vehicle quite like this, so I'm having a hell of a time trying to figure out how to describe what I'm even looking at. So here's the top-down view of this thing. A bunch more PE going on here. Now we're starting the gun, step 14. And if, I believe what I've read is that this is the in, just the exact same kit they sell as a SIG 33. So here you've got a metal barrel going on a bunch of little bits. This will be very similar to the Nashorn gun I built. The wheels and the suspension type things for that gun carriage. Tons of little, little fiddly things. There's the sight. Good God in heaven, I don't even know what's going on here. Little things, lots of little styrene things, which encourages me because I like building like that. Um, then here's the completed sort of whatever this is called. Not an artillery expert, Andy. You can tell me what that's called. So gun, 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 gun. Here's a gun shield and it comes together down here. And it is really, really impressive looking, just by itself. Super cool. And then you literally just mount this whole gun, and that was from step cripes, 14 to 24, so it's a 10-step gun. And then you mount it into the Panzer 1B, and then you slap this thing on top of it, and that is what this vehicle was. I mean, that makes sense. But the fact that you really build it like that, that surprised me when I first got the kit. And then we got Magic Tracks. Tiny, 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 tiny magic tracks. Um, here's your marking options. So Russia, oh, France, Russia, Russia, France, Balkans. So not really sure where that footage comes from, but apparently it was in Russia. So there's the instructions. Um, that is 26 steps, which seems a bit steep. Here's the dragon card. This is just hilarious to me. Okay, so here's the barrel for the SIG-33. It's pretty hollow, or it goes pretty far down, which is cool, because once you get a little paint in there, that'll look perfect. Some of the metal barrels you get, they only go down to about here. Um, but this one is pretty cool and pretty big. All right, so there's the barrel. Here's your PE for the wheels, some P. I I have no idea what for, um, the wicker round casings, well, it's not as much PE as I worried. It's a pretty small fret here, you've got the exhaust piece. Mm, not real sure what it is, I'm not going to pretend like I do know, but it's not a ton, and it's nothing that's terribly um, intimidating for me. Here you've just got some visor pieces by the look of it, maybe some headlights right there and clear. And this, the smallest Magic Tracks I've ever seen. It looks like pepper or something. Like, come on now. Are you serious? Like, man. All right, so I, I shouldn't act like I've never built Panzer I Tracks. I have. I'm doing model casting ones right now. And they're about yay big. They each come a left and a right on each little sprue piece. So they're tiny. And I'm doing workable ones, so fine. But I think when you see them all in a bag... It just it's silly because it looks like nothing like I have a bag of sprue nubs that I'm gonna throw in some old extra thin to make some filler and they're like larger than the tracks man like that's just crazy to me um, so that's the dragon card with the barrel there's your decals um, a pretty considerable amount of decals for one vehicle different size Balkan Kreutz and all that all early war, you can tell because they're thinner and they like longer, they're not quite as bold. Look at that. Cool.
Is that a G? Ooh. Okay. Sorry to get excited on camera there, but uh, so the the guys in charge of these divisions or units, they would paint the first letter of their last name on the vehicle, and Guderian's was always a G, and I kind of wanted to paint one of those in my Volkswagen. Um, but that'll give me the chance to put it on an early war vehicle. Very exciting. <clears throat> so there's that. Now, the amount of sprues in here is a lot more than I expected, so I'm just going to start. Okay. Here's the hull tub. Wee little thing. It's a Panzer 1B, so it's a little bit bigger than the Panzer 1 I'm making now, the A. But it's pretty tiny. Set that next to... The NAS horn I've been working on. There's your comparison. So it's pretty small. Um, let's see. You've got detail up here. And this is nice. I don't know that there should be detail under here. And I certainly will never see it once it's built. But the rivets are nice. These little return roller guys. Man so small. And then in with that, in that bag we had some headlights with the conduits built on. See them right there? That's easier for early war vehicles. I'm still impressed with how like small and crisp this dragon stuff is. That's really cool. There's a no-tech light by the look of it. Oops, and I bent a piece. Which is like a convoy light, I think. These are different types of convoy lights, if I'm not mistaken. That's the blue one. So that's the whole tub. Now this I thought was really cool. This is how the superstructures come. In a bag, then on a piece of plastic that holds their shape. Where was this with my Nashorn Dragon? Because that's the one I had right here. Not that this review is about this, but this piece here was warped to high heaven. It's like, like that. And if they'd only done this, I wouldn't have had that problem. This is fantastic. So, we'll take a look at these guys. They look really clean, really crisp, really straight, which I love. Because in that way I don't have to, like, fight with the razor edge stuff. And the detail on it's really clean, too. Very cool. I don't know the difference between the two offhand. But there is two of them. I'm sure it specifies. But that's very, very cool. See, I've done this hard plastic thing so it holds its shape. I don't know why they don't always do that. All right, let's keep it going. Here we have, this is a sprue for this kit. I believe there's two of them. N sprue. Um, I don't know what these parts are. This is This tank is so, or SP is so outside of my realm of what I'm normally into. By the look of it, I would say ammo locker or something. So you've got these hinges here. And then you've got this piece here. That's a little warped. Is that supposed to be warped? Yes. Okay. So either they're identically warped or it's supposed to be warped or shaped that way. So I'm going to assume that it is. It doesn't seem like it's in bad shape. So there's two of these. I'm going to guess ammo lockers of some kind. Then we have this guy. Again, the sprue was tooled for this kit. Man, I, I, I like to know what I'm talking about with these reviews, but I have very little idea of what I'm looking at. It was such a bizarre vehicle. But everything is clean and crisp and good, and I kind of really would like to build this thing now. Very impressive kit, and it's funny because it came with that old Panzer 1B pre-Magic Track era kit, which looked like crap, and I opened the box, and they were in there together, and I looked at the old one first, and then this one I was, like, blown away. But everything looks good on there. Next up, we have dual drive sprocket and bogey sprues. Get him out of there. Or wheels. So those wheels are really nice. 
The sprocket's nice, there's only two connections. Although, not loving that, the sprue gate is in between the, the teeth and the sprocket. I'm not going to like cleaning that up at all. I'm not sure if that's better or worse than it being on the tip of a, of a sprocket. I like it when they're on the tip. It's a little easier to clean up. There's some return rollers, some tiny little guys here, not sure what they're for, and then some bogeys. There's two of those. And then here's the rest of the suspension. Just standard wheels. Panzer one wheels. And here's the springs for the bogies. These suspension units are a little bit weird, at least in the TriStar kit I built. They're a little uh, difficult. But that's all incredibly clean. And you're going to add PE to those, so they'll look even better. So, here we go with double SIG 33 wheel sprues. Look at those monsters. I can't help but find artillery pieces fascinating. Like, I'm not, I'm not into modern stuff. I'm not into mostly anything except for German stuff, but artillery for some reason. It's just so intricate. It looks really cool. I'm going to assume, yeah, this is just a SIG 33 sprue, so... But there's some tiny little parts on there. And there's two of those. And here we've got a Panzer 1A sprue. So I'm going to guess this is interior stuff, because this looks like radios and things like that, where the transmission goes. I'm not an expert here, but there's the floor. And you've got what looks like the interior of the final drives, maybe? Some like non-slip texture stuff here, really fine. Wow. Um, all this stuff is really clean. This must be from that the newer Panzer One A's. It's all interior, very very nice. And here, got a sweet little Sig Thirty Three ammo sprue. So you got these big, crazy looking rounds, and then I believe. Separate bits, for so you can sort of. I'm not sure why they're like that. This must be a whole round for stowage, and then you can assemble them, so you can have them spent maybe. It's a little bit bent, but that's pretty cool. Bunch of different types there. That's what was in that bag. Still going, and remember, this is one of those tiny little boxes. So here we've got another Panzer One sprue. Doesn't specify the version. This is the front, um, where the final drives are. This looks like maybe engine deck. Or actually, this looks like engine deck. I don't know what the deuce that is. That's really nice. There's more springs. They're pretty well done. Uh, that looks like the exhausts here. Very cool. I'm not loving that. These are tools, and I don't like these clamps, but maybe they were like that. I like the clamps that look like you could actually use them. These just look like little nubs. That one. And also in there was this. Here's your front fenders. Bunch of tiny little guys. I don't know what these bits do. This looks like a linkage of some kind. And that big plate, that's probably the rear of the tank. But lots of little guys. Man, look at this. It's very, very small. That's a jack clamp, I recognize that, but... Ooh, and a very different bolt cutters than I'm used to seeing. Maybe that's early bore bolt cutters. Pretty cool. Still not done. Okay, then we've got more SIG-33 parts, so I'm guessing this is part of the, the carriage for the SIG-33. Um, I recognize this is the bit for elevation. Um, I'm guessing, oh yeah, so these, normally when you assemble, sorry, it's off camera. When you assemble this stuff, this is where the, um, ooh, broken piece. Oh man, look at that. That is no good. 
but I imagine when the gun is together it might not be an issue. It's too bad though. Um, it's been sitting in a box getting compressed for a while, maybe that's my fault, but uh, this is what the barrel ends up going on. You put these two halves together and you mix it with something like this and the barrel goes on there and eventually becomes something like that. But apart from the broken piece, this stuff all looks good. There's the breech right there. Here's the main bits of the SIG 33 with that carriage. Very well detailed, these guys. Look at that. Nuts. Tons of little things. This is the gun shield itself for the SIG 33. I'm not going to pretend like I know a ton about this thing. But I will when I build it, and that's why I buy these things. Yeah, tiny little bits for guns. <laughs> that's what you're looking at, but everything looks good. Apart from that broken piece, which I'm kind of bummed out about now. Last two sprues. Here we have another Panzer I sprue. Now this looks like a turret, kind of, to me. And that engine deck, maybe a different variant of an engine deck. More suspension or swing arm almost, that looks like. Some really, really tiny bits. Antenna, right there. Antenna protector thing. There was something here, I'm guessing, like a turret or something that they didn't want you to have, because otherwise you'd have the ability to build a kit that wasn't what was in the box, and they don't like that. So, there's this Panzer I sprue, and our last sprue is another Panzer I sprue. More interior? This looks like ammo stowage to me. Like 20 mil? Are they only have machine guns? What the hell is this? Not sure what this stuff is, but it does look like ammo stowage for sure. So, and then you've got, you've got a gas filler, another plate, another exhaust, another firewall. There's a lot of parts in this kit. It's crazy. So that's that last sprue. That looks like a transmission cover right there. And that's it. But for such a little box, I am very impressed with how much is in it. Um, a little bummed out by the damaged part, but that happens. I mean, at least the um, at least the razor edge stuff is in good shape. So that's what we'd be building. See, there's that bit that was had a broken piece, and hopefully it'll be back here behind the superstructure, and you'll never even know it's there. I'm trying to learn how to be less of a perfectionist, but I mean, this is the thickness of this box which is very, very thin for all the stuff that was in there. For example, here's a KT. Like, This is more of a standard box size, and then this is one of these tiny little guys. And there's all that stuff in there. So would I recommend this thing? I don't really recommend normally. Don't try building this if you're new at this stuff, though. Uh, that's why it's been sitting on a shelf of mine for a year. But it's an amazingly detailed little kit. Uh, but it goes for kind of a high price now. I think the last time I saw it, I saw it go for about 35 a couple days ago. Um, but most of the time it's about 60. Which, for such a specific vehicle, I don't know if that's worthwhile or not. But hopefully now you at least know what's in it. 